You are listening to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast episode 12. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about our debt freedom story, how we paid off our first house, how we bought our second farmhouse with cash, and what debt freedom has meant for us as a family. My name is Lisa, mom of six and creator of the blog and YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. I remember the first time I shared our debt freedom story of our last house over on YouTube. I was really afraid to press publish. The subject of money is in all ways taboo. It's not something to talk about. And so of course that made me nervous and scared to share our story and something that I feel like has been very meaningful for us and has opened up a lot of doors and opportunities for our family. But I shared it anyway, and what I found, there was some negativity, but very little. The reaction I got was messages and comments from so many people who were thankful that we shared our story because it encouraged them that it is something that's actually possible. Part of the reason why I think the story is relatable is we don't have this story of we won the lottery and paid off our house, or we were making $200,000 a year and paid off our house. Our story is we were a one income family with three children at the time, making probably around $40,000 a year and we paid off our house. So this isn't something that you have to have special circumstances to do. So let's start at the beginning. I know I shared in episode two, I believe of this podcast, the renovation story of our first farmhouse, how we fixed it up over the course of 10 years. So that house is the first part of the story because that one was our first home and we paid it off in less than five years. We purchased the home for $76,000. I'm just gonna share some real numbers here. I think on my YouTube video, I shared roundabouts, like under 100 or whatever. But we've sold that house now, and so I don't know, I guess I feel completely comfortable sharing that we bought it for $76,000. At the time, we already had some savings built up. My husband, Luke, very frugal by nature, came into marriage with not debt, but a lot of savings, actually. So he had been working for the city in our town for two or three years before we were married, and he just, never really could bring himself to spend money on basically anything except complete necessities. So when we bought our house, he had, I believe around $20,000 already saved up. So we were able to put quite a down payment on the mortgage. So we put down 20,000, I believe we owed around 55 to 56,000 dollars on our mortgage. And the first thing we did was we set a goal not really an exact time frame, but we knew that we wanted to put all of our efforts into paying that house off no matter what. So it was kind of a thing looming over our heads more than I feel like it is for a lot of young people. I think a lot of times a mortgage feels like a necessary evil. You'll have it for 30 years. It's just a bill that you have to pay every month. You never have any intention of not having it. We went into the process knowing that we didn't want it and we were determined that it was going to get paid So with that kind of focus in mind, a lot of things that you would normally think to purchase didn't seem like a good idea because it would work against our goal of paying off our house. So a lot of times you think, okay, we can afford a new living room set or something like that because after we pay our mortgage and our insurance and all of our bills, we have this amount of money left over, therefore we can buy this. We didn't look at it like that. We instead thought, Well, we still owe $55,000 on our mortgage. We therefore have no extra money to buy anything. So with that in mind, we put every extra dollar we had towards our mortgage. I got a lot of criticism in my first video explaining our method because I talked about how we would put our tax return back on it. I realize now, especially, that having a large tax return is a problem. It means that you've obviously paid in too much and that's why you're getting so much back. But nonetheless, that is our story. Every year, because of how much we put in, because of our income, because of how many kids we had, 
which at the time was just two and three, we always got back a pretty good size tax return. I venture to guess that most Americans get a tax return based on all the commercials I see around this time where companies promise you can buy this whole living room furniture set with your tax return and finance the rest interest free. I see commercials like this. So I think that most people get a pretty good tax return. We did, and when we got it, we had one thing in mind, and that was to put it on the house. Now, at the time, we took vacations, but they were the kind of vacations where we would load up the kids in the car, drive all the way to the East Coast, you know, that takes like two or three days from where we live, camp along the way, buy food and cook it on a little Coleman stove. That's the kind of vacation I'm talking about. Very, very inexpensive. It would have never been, in my vocabulary to spend even close to $1,000 on a vacation at that time. Now, of course, now we've done some things like that, but at the time that would have been completely unfathomable. I also did not have a grocery budget. I talked about this in episode one. Instead, I just focused on cooking foods that were inherently cheap. So anything from scratch, like whole grains, meat, veggies, potatoes, those were all things that are very inexpensive because they haven't been processed in any way. So you're not paying for someone's efforts in transforming a basic food into something else. So I cooked like that. We didn't really do any extras. We didn't have the kids in any extracurricular activities at the time. I would say we didn't do a lot of things that most Americans consider standard things. We didn't have internet in our house for a really long time. I didn't have a smartphone until literally three years ago this May or four years ago this May. I believe three years ago this May was the first time I ever had a smartphone device because having internet on your phone is another 50 bucks a month that I just didn't wanna pay for. My husband didn't get a phone at all. He had one through his work, but again, it wasn't a smartphone. We didn't pay for subscription services online. We didn't have gym memberships. We didn't get the car washed. A lot of little things we just instead put our money towards paying off our house. Recently, there's been something going viral on the internet and it was something like, do you know how to waste $10,000 in a year and it's spending $27 a day? That kind of illustrates in a way how we paid off our house in five years because by not spending those $27 on little things, we were saving $10,000 a year. I never really thought about it quite like that. But if you only owe $55,000 on your house and you cut out a few of those little things and you do save $10,000 a year plus adding in a tax return, that is five years to equal $50,000. And that is about how it went for us. We ended up having enough money left over at the end of every year to put about an extra $10,000 on our mortgage so that we were able to pay it off in less than five years. It ended up being about four and a half years when we actually paid it off. Now, another thing that we avoided while paying off our house was renovations. We did paint, we did refinish the floors, but we did not rip down walls. We lived with a little tiny bit of ugly and that was just fine with us. Another thing that we never did while getting out of debt or ever for that matter, not now either, is take on a car loan. This is another thing I get a lot of criticism for because people are worried about the safety. But here's the thing, when I say that we didn't take out a car loan, I'm not saying we bought a car from 1999 and shoved the kids all in the back double buckled. I'm talking about a 2008 Dodge Caravan that passed all the safety tests, obviously when my daughter was born in 2008, Maybe it wouldn't pass them now, but if it was safe enough then, it's something that I am willing to take that chance knowing how much that would mean for our family to not have to worry about a car loan. Car loans seem really innocent, I get it, because it's like just an extra three, four hundred dollars per month. But if you put that into a calculator, a debt calculator, which again, Dave Ramsey does all the time to people on the phone, and it is a mind blowing thing because it's not just three or four hundred dollars a month. If you took that three or four hundred dollars a month that you spend on a car loan or that people spend on a car loan, you put it into a Roth IRA, a mutual fund, a traditional IRA, some kind of market account that averages historically around 8% 
per year, you will be shocked at what that car is costing you. It's not just 300 bucks a month, it's like a million dollars at retirement or something crazy like that. Get an investment calculator, you'll see what I'm saying. But knowing these things made it really easy not to choose to take on a car loan and to keep pursuing that goal of debt freedom. With a goal in mind, you're able to make little sacrifices knowing that it's going to pay off and mean a lot for you and your family. So fast forward, we lived in our house another five years after paying it off. Let me tell you, life is really comfortable even when you're making $40,000 a year when you don't have a mortgage. As Dave Ramsey always says, if you guys listen to Dave Ramsey, I'm a fan even though he can be a little bit confrontational at times, which makes my personality type just a little bit uncomfortable, but it's also really fun to listen to. As he always says, your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. I know that sounds so obvious, but I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much you can put to work even a small amount of income. So once our mortgage was completely paid off, we started doing some renovations on our house. Still nothing crazy because we still didn't have a ton of extra income, obviously. With three kids at this time and one income, we still didn't have tons of extra money, but we started putting some money in the house that ultimately ended up making our house go up in value. We also started investing. I get asked that question a Lot. What do we do about retirement? What do we do about investing? We did invest throughout this time of paying off our house. My husband had an investment at work. A certain amount always came out of his paycheck every week and it was just money that we never really felt like we had because it, we never saw it. So we did invest during that time, but after, whenever we had that extra money that had been going toward our mortgage, we didn't just start going on vacations and buying furniture and new appliances. Instead, we started investing even more in our retirement accounts. We like to max out our Roth IRA accounts. We did Luke's work plan, we continued with that, and we just kept plugging away at saving for our future and living at the same lifestyle as we had before. What we had though afterward that maybe you don't have when you're in debt is complete freedom. When you look around your house, and every single thing you see, you own outright. It's just a special feeling of freedom. So the biggest thing that I feel like debt freedom has done for us is it allowed us to take a huge risk and pursue my blog as our full-time income. A little less than two years ago, my husband quit his job so that we could do the blog full-time. Now, if we owed anybody any money at all, I don't think we could have made that move. It just would have been too scary because we weren't making a ton of money with my blog. We were making more with it than he was making at his job, but not by much. What we saw though with the blogging business was potential if we had more time, if the eight hours that he was spending away at his job making an hourly rate, we were able to put into a business at home together, we would be able to turn what was already pretty profitable into something way more profitable. And that is what we saw the first year that he was home. But we would have never, ever been able to do it if we'd been in debt. It would have just simply been way too scary. I've had other bloggers reach out to me and ask me, at what point did you know that he could quit his job? And they asked me like, what were you making when you decided that he could quit his job? And my answer is pretty shocking because it's not this big number that most people would feel comfortable with. It was just that we figured out what we could live on and not owing anybody a dime, knowing that I have the skills at this point to cook from scratch, I felt like we could live on so little money that we were willing to take the risk and try to make the blog into a bigger thing. And we saw that happening in the year that followed him quitting his job. So that opportunity is something afforded to us by debt freedom. After Luke quit his job, another opportunity that all stems back to the debt freedom goal that we set out for in the very beginning of marriage is that we were able to look for a home that wasn't in the area that we lived before. Whenever Luke worked for the city in our town, we never wanted to, wanted to move more than five miles or so away because it was so convenient for him to go to work. Actually, our home on Boone Street 
was always about two miles from his work. So he even came home for lunch every day, which was amazing. He didn't have to pack a lunch. We were able to see him midday. It just made for a really nice little life because we never had to factor in commute time. And we never wanted to lose that. But once we were debt free and we were able to have him quit his job and take a little bit of a risk in going for the blog, we were able to set our sights on a farmhouse and acreage. So our last house, it was in town on a quarter acre on a really busy street. It was actually a state highway and it bordered a public park. So it was nowhere near the country farm dream that I had at all. It worked. I was able to build my blog in that house. The blog is named after it, but it wasn't our dream. So after he was home, we were able to start looking in other places. That's when we expanded our search. We found our 1890s Victorian farmhouse on seven acres. And because we had continued to save money away, knowing that this future goal was coming, we were able to buy this house with cash. Because whenever we paid off our first house, five years into marriage, we knew that we never wanted to take on any debt again. Once we started looking for acreage, we realized it was gonna be pretty hard to stick to that goal and it was gonna make the budget pretty tight. So what we did was we lived in our house for five years after it was paid off. We kept saving, we kept improving it. We sold it for a tidy little profit. And with the savings and what we've sold it for, we were able to buy our new farmhouse with cash. We're renovating it now on a cash only basis and we will stick to debt freedom barring any crazy circumstances. So basically to sum it up, if there is something that we want and we don't have the cash for it, the motto has always been that we just simply can't buy it, we won't buy it. So what does our life look like now? I get questions about what do you do about investing? What do you do about insurance? What about budgets? So now our goals are continuing to save money for retirement. Although I love blogging, I love creating podcasts and videos, it would be really nice for it to be completely optional to do any of that. So we are saving money aggressively for the goal of retiring at a younger age than what is average. I'll never stop working. I love working. I'm the kind of person who is go, go, go. I love accomplishing things. And any given day, I have a to-do list a mile long and I have full intentions of continuing to do that. And I can totally see myself writing another book and starting another business for that matter. But I love the idea of it being completely optional and having our finances sorted out so that we just can focus on raising our family together. That has always been the goal. That's the reason why we wanted to bring Luke home from his job. It's the reason why we've kept our budget lean and mean so that we could focus more on just living life. And that is what we are preparing for now. So we currently invest in mutual funds, IRAs, and make sure to put in a regular amount. We actually have a monthly amount set that comes straight out of our checking account. And the reason that we do that is for dollar cost averaging. So if you've heard about this, this is something that I learned about, I think in college. If you invest a lump sum, if you've saved up a lot and you invest a lump sum right when the market's really, really high, you run the risk of the market going way down and then you've quote unquote lost a lot of money, which you don't really lose money until you pull it out. But when you invest a set amount every month, you are buying into the stock market at all of its fluctuations. So you're buying when it's low, you're buying when it's high, you're getting a little bit of all of it so it averages out. And with that strategy, the market historically has averaged around 8%. So we are focusing on that by getting a certain amount out every month. We also usually will have a little bit left over at the end of the year and do some lump sum as well. But we do prioritize investing now that we are completely debt free. We also do spend more disposable income. I think that's probably common of people once they're in their 30s and 40s versus their 20s. We definitely do more things now that I wouldn't have done when I was in my 20s, nor should I have done. We have the kids in an extracurricular activity. Each kid is in one thing that of course costs. Luke and I go out on date nights. We go out to dinner. We wouldn't have done that before. We pay for a babysitter, which would have blown my mind back when I was in my 20s. But now we do those things and we do enjoy the extra income that we have. As far as insurance, I guess this fits here in this financial discussion, but I get asked about this all the time and rather than making a whole podcast on it because I feel like it's a really short answer, 
I'll just share. We do Christian medical sharing through Samaritan's Ministries. When Luke first quit his job, we signed up for coverage just on the open market and we had it for about two months before I realized it was crazy how much money we were spending for something I felt like we would hardly ever use. So we've been on Samaritans for over a year now. I had Daniel on Samaritans. Whenever you do a home birth with them, they incentivize that by not even making you pay the deductible, which really it's just an unsurable amount because it's not insurance. And it was the cheapest birth I ever had. So that was cool, even cheaper than my van birth. It essentially to explain what Christian medical sharing is, is instead of paying a deductible and premiums, you send a check each month to someone else in the sharing pool that has a need. And then whenever you have a need, people send you checks. So it is essentially exactly how it sounds. You share medical expenses. That's it in a nutshell. But if you want to research into that more, there are several companies that do it. Samaritans isn't the only one. We've done it for a, over a year now and we've been very happy with it. Okay, so to sum it up, if you are a young person or even if you're not and you still just have this desire to in the next five years, take control of your financial situation and become debt free, here is my tips for you. First, buy a house you can afford. In fact, buy one way under what you can afford. Don't buy what they'll approve you for. Buy the cheapest house you can. If you are in a situation where you feel overwhelmed by your debt and you're stressed out by it, get into less house. The next tip is to set a goal. Make this something that you are going to do no matter what so that everything is framed with this goal of paying off your debt, whether it be your mortgage or if it's just your other debts like your student loans and your car payments or your credit cards. Get the goal in your head and go follow Dave Ramsey because he has baby steps where you pay off the smallest debt first just to create that momentum to get you excited to start attacking the debt. Next, be okay with a little bit of ugly and a little bit of unimpressive life, okay? You might have a house that isn't going to be a scroll stopper on Instagram. You might not be wearing the best clothes, but here's the thing, nobody really cares anyway. They're all worried about their own things, probably. You might be driving a car that people think is uncool. Next is only use cash. If you can't afford it, if it's going to require you to take out any kind of a loan, unless it's like a life-saving medical procedure, you probably don't need it. Almost anything, you might justify it to yourself and say, we really do need it, but unless it is a basic necessity of life to keep you alive, like food or medical, then you just don't need it. I don't know of any other examples of something that you absolutely have to have. And my last tip is just to get in your head what you can do if you're debt free. If you wake up at the beginning of every month and there is no one that you owe, imagine how much less stressed out you'll be, how much you can start investing towards your future, how much you can give, and just the impact that would have on you and your marriage. Don't have to worry about debt and what opportunities it might bring. So for us, it brought the opportunity for us to do something crazy like quit our jobs and pursue an internet business that we wouldn't have been able to try if we hadn't done that. My encouragement in this story and the point of me telling it is that this is possible. If you've ever thought that you are in some kind of financial situation where you just don't have enough money and there's no way to make ends meet, know that there are people who are doing it on low incomes and a lot of different circumstances. So I have a friend on Instagram at Rocky Hedge Farm. Her name is Sarah. She makes her home in a double wide trailer that they got for $10,000. She's transforming it into a farmhouse and she's done a really beautiful job. She has it on two acres. The point is she's kept her living very simple and minimal so that in the financial situation that they are in, they're able to feel free without having a huge income. My sister, Laura, she's also paid off her house. She is a stay-at-home mom. She's a blogger now, but she's only been a blogger for a little over a year. Her husband is an auto mechanic. They have four kids and they did it in the same way that Luke and I did it. They bought a simple house. They've lived their lives simply and they just recently completely paid off their house too. The point over and over again is just that it is possible. You can 
make your money work for you. Money can earn money. That's why people say the rich get richer because whenever you have money and you know what to do with it, even if it's a small amount of money, but you know how to invest in either tools to create more income or a business or you invest it in the market. Once you know how to harness that and take each dollar as an opportunity, your life can change. All right, well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. If you could leave me a review in iTunes, I would be so appreciative. It is really helping my podcast to grow and reach more people. Also keep those ideas coming. I love getting new ideas and I put them all in a list of podcast ideas for me to discuss. I'm excited to start knocking them off one by one. If you want to learn how to start your own blog, I have a free 10 day email course. You can get that at bit.ly forward slash start a blog from scratch. That's bit, B-I-T dot L-Y slash start a blog from scratch. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next episode of Simple Farmhouse Life.